Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for part five, the final part of this Monday Q&A and hopefully I can get this done and edited before all these deliveries start arriving. So let's get this done. How come a lot of guys using terrible row form have huge lats, even natural guys? Why is that? Because the truth is a barbell row does not require strict form in order to completely stimulate the lats. The thing is, is that if you use strict form on a barbell row, you can get the same amount of lat stimulation with less weight. So when you cheat, you can use a heavier weight, but you need more weight to overload it, but you can oftentimes get a heavier eccentric overload at the expense of proper concentric loading. So a lot of rows are actually a lift to where you can achieve just as much development with terrible form as you can with textbook perfect form. It's just an issue of what are you trying to do with it. But the reality is for just overall hypertrophy, either method works. And I don't think either method works better than another. I've seen both successfully used by many, many guys, like you said, natural and enhanced, to build impressive backs. The truth is the barbell row and rowing in general just doesn't require strict form in order to get proper development on. All right, next question. This comes from fruit. Doesn't produce an insulin response. How does this affect triglyceride formation? When fructose molecules are converted into glucose molecules, is this when an insulin response occurs? Please explain. I'm confused how the body reacts to fruit and if I can manipulate these factors for weight loss. Okay, if you think that you can manipulate insulin response to your food to affect your weight loss, you are dead fucking wrong. This is a very outdated idea. It's a bro science idea. It's nonsensical. Insulin response is a result of an excessive insulin response is a result of insulin resistance, which is generally a result of a terrible diet and being sedentary. People who are athletic and active don't have this issue for the most part, or if they do, it tends to go away once they become athletic and active. And the more active you are, the less insulin your body produces to anything. So if you want to manage insulin response in your body better, exercise hard and often and that will do more than trying to manipulate your diet it will do massively more than manipulating your diet will so don't worry about that aspect and worrying about all this insulin response to it you you are aware that most fruits are not mostly fructose by calorie a lot of fruits actually have twice or three times as much glucose in them as they do actual fructose you're not biting into something it's just a pure ball of fructose here we don't see pure fructose found really in nature like you're thinking of. There's a lot of glucose in most fruits and the amount of fructose in them varies from one to the other, but yeah, they still produce an insulin response eventually. It might not be for 30 minutes after you eat it, but the fructose itself will produce an insulin response. But the thing is you're already getting one from the glucose almost immediately after you eat it. So even if it takes the fructose a little longer to get processed by the liver, convert into glucose, and if it transports it out of the liver, which it generally does, and it reaches a bloodstream, sure, then it needs insulin to manage it, but you get the same thing with protein. When you eat protein, once it starts breaking a lot of it down into glucose and things, you're still getting an insulin response from that. It just, it's a little more delayed. But I wouldn't worry about these things. Insulin manipulation and management for people who are not injecting insulin and for people who are athletic and active is a complete non-issue. You shouldn't even need to worry about it. You shouldn't even need to put any thought into it because you can't manipulate it in a way that will benefit you. All right, guys, last question of the week. In average, how often does someone stall and reset on your novice program assuming nutrition, rest, and sleep are good? You know what? There's actually no way to determine this without me taking 300 people on the program and measuring them over six months and giving you an average. And it actually doesn't matter because obviously you're going to reset more often the longer you run the program. So someone in the first month, very, very few people have to reset anything in the first month. I've had people tell me who've run the program that they've gone six to eight weeks before they've had to do any resets before. Now those are not everybody. Some people will have to do them sooner, but some people do. But then oftentimes you're gonna find as you get further into the program, a lot of your big lifts, you're gonna be resetting once a month, sometimes more. You're gonna stall multiple times in a row on some of the big lifts. As you progress further into it, you get bigger and stronger. So knowing an average doesn't matter. 
And it particularly doesn't matter because I've developed the progression and the resets to work for everybody. It's almost a foolproof way of doing the linear progression because it is custom tailored to your individual strength curve this month. The way that I've written it, you will always be where you need to be at any given point. If you just follow my resets and my progression, the way I lay it out, it will automatically put you where you need to be in terms of your strength and recovery cycle. It will put you where you need to be as an individual as long as you follow the way I lay it out and you don't mess with it. So you don't need to worry about what the averages are. Don't worry about it. Just run the program and let the progression and the resets put you where you need to be for optimal hypertrophy because I've designed it to always keep your loading parameters roughly where you need to be based upon your strength levels in order for you to keep maximum workload in the, the intensity range that you need. If you've been running it a little while and you look at the patterns in your own resets, you'll look back and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go. Roll these sleeves up. Mount Bicephius.